This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of Atlanta, Georgia. Her name is Somalia. Ms. Somalia, how are you doing today? I am doing good. How are you? Great. Fantastic. Well, welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about some soul music with you. Fantastic. Glad to hear that. Um, we have been trying to connect for a while. Uh, I think over a month or so, we kept playing phone tag or the dates didn't quite match up. Uh, trying to get it, it's alignment, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I appreciate that because we are getting, this is at the time of recording, this is Christmas week. So thank you for yes. taking time to uh, to talk to us today. Oh yes, um, I was looking forward to it. So I'm happy you could make the time during Christmas week as well. <laughs> Anytime. Um, now you have a new EP out. Um, yes. You also have a new single out as well called Risk Yes, I do. The EP is called yes. Never Enough Time. Yes. All right. We're going to get into all that because um, um, we were talking before we started recording. Um, you have a very interesting story and I want to get into it right away. Um, now you are based in Atlanta, but you're actually from New Jersey. Correct. Yes, or actually from New Jersey, grew up in Stone Mountain, Lithonia, Eastside Atlanta area. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit more about um, Somalia. Yes. So again, singer and songwriter based in Atlanta. Um, I would consider myself to be an R&B soul artist. Uh, I grew up listening to a variety of different artists like uh, Jill Scott, Erica Badu, uh, Anita Baker, Maxwell, uh, Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson. And so all of these different artists were have definitely influenced me. And um, I think that it, it has helped me to be able to shape my sound, which is a mix of uh, R&B, jazz and hip hop and neo soul. And I just I've always loved music and I've loved singing and performing. So, you know, this is it's kind of like my calling. OK. Um, did your um, did you grow up with around a lot of music? Um, was music a presence in your home? Yes, uh, my parents are both artists. Uh, my mom is a singer uh, or a dancer and an actress. Um, and my dad sings as well and plays multiple instruments. Um, and so I've just been around lots of different types of music. Um, and just, I think just having that creative artistic energy just gave me the confidence to be able to walk in my path of, you know, of being a vocalist and a, a writer. Okay. Um, siblings, are your siblings in, uh, in the music business as well or? Right. So no, they actually are kind of little artisans in their own way. My sister draws, my brother does as well. Um, one of my my oldest brother uh, actually went to school for like music production, but um, also does graphic design. So I think they have more of the visual kind of artistic presence in them. And I sort of walked in and kept going in, in music, <laughs> music direction. OK, um, now you mentioned that your parents are um, artistic. Uh, what do your parents do? Yes. Yeah, so my mom is actually a, a realtor. Um, and my dad uh, it works at for a, a nonprofit um, in logistics. So they both kind of move. They've always been entrepreneurs, though. Um, you know, when we were in New Jersey, they had their own uh, bookstore 
in the mall um, in which they would have lots of um, books from, you know, all the various black thinkers and scholars. Um, and I think just, again, seeing them like work for so long on their own um, and always like, you know, employ themselves made me want to, you know, aspire to do the same thing. Cause I am an art administrator as well. So, um, but I think that it like just watching them sort of like take all of their, their talents with the artistic um, talents as well, just kind of, bled into to me in some type of way too. Okay. Um, now I read your bio and I read that you went to uh, Spelman. Uh, I did. And so what was that, what was that experience like? <laughs> yes, I love Spelman, you know, and sometimes I think about, you know, what would be different about me if I would have went, you know, straight to like an institution that was just for music or performing arts. And I think that I really would have missed that grounding that is so necessary, I think, as a Black woman and as, as an artist um, that I think you need before you're even sort of out in that world, because sometimes you, 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 it's important to know who you are. And I think that that's what I really got, like, at Spelman. My parents are, you know, since I was a baby were telling me, I mean, my name is Somalia. They were telling me you are an African queen. You are of the nation. And I, I, I was connecting with it, but I think I, it was just kind of like, okay, mommy, okay, daddy. And then when I went to school, I was like, no, like you, you have to have that in you because when you're out in the real world, people will try to tell you who you are and who you should be. And I think as Spellman, if, if nothing else, they taught us that, you will create your own path and it's it's up to you to be who you want to be. And I'm like forever grateful for that, for my institution, my HBCU. Wow, congratulations. Um, now, did you major in uh, music at Spelman? No, I was actually a women's studies major um, and my, my concentration was performing arts. So I was studying uh, Black women in entertainment and the arts um, and sort of designing a degree in which, you know, I could still take performing arts classes, but I was also in the midst of like feminist theory um, and just learning more so about Black women and where our place or has been, I guess, historically within the entertainment field. Um, but then also like, what were our large contributions and accomplishments and what have we contributed towards the field as a whole? So I, I learned a lot. Okay, great. Um, now, um, when did you, or uh, how did you get your start uh, in music? I, so I first, re I recorded my first song when I was 13 and I actually originally started off by writing poetry and like one of my teachers told my mom, you know, I don't know what type of writer she is yet, but she said she's definitely a writer. And at the time, you know, you're in elementary school, you're like, okay, I'm just writing these poems. And then um, I, as I was writing the poems, I noticed that like I would start to hear melodies like with the words that I had. And so I would just continue to write them down. And my grandmother told me one day, she said, I think you can sing. She was like, sing that, sing what you just wrote like one more time. And I was just like, okay. And I kept, I just kept trying it. And she said, I really think that you can sing and I want to get you vocal coaching so that you can really see if this can go somewhere. And I think with vocal coaching, with uh, doing chorus in um, grade school, it really helped me to be able to find like my voice and just be a little bit more comfortable. Because of course I didn't know exactly everything I could do or range and all of that. But I think it just made me have the confidence to say, I think this is something that I really like to do and that I may want to pursue okay so your grandmother uh, saw the talent before you did yes isn't that funny because you know sometimes like I guess a lot of singers that I know like they kind of grew up in the church and that was kind of like their first sort of entry or into music and like really trying out their their voice and that wasn't my experience like my grandmother had us in church but and she would have us singing, you know, Jesus loves me, this, I, but it wasn't like I was leading the choir, you know? So with her, like her being able to point it out so soon that, you know, she could just hear a little bit of something um, just really gave me that confidence. Yeah. To be able to, to just try it out. Okay. Um, wow. Great story. Um, now this, let's talk about your, your music. Um, this, latest EP, 
uh, Never Enough Time. Now, this is not your first EP, correct? No, not my first. When was your first EP? My first EP came out in 2015. Uh, it was called Urban Sassy Soul. And I was a sophomore at Spelman. And I was just taking my songbook, getting in the studio with different produce, producers that I've met and was just trying it out. And I, it was like literally my entry into saying like, what do you guys think about this? And I had a little EP release party and stuff, but yeah, it was, it was in 2015 and goodness, it feels like a while back, but yeah. it was so, <laughs> it was so crucial, like during that time. Okay. And so, um, I imagine that it was also a learning experience for you for this upcoming EP or the EP that you have out now. Um, who did you, um, did you now, did you produce this EP uh, yourself or? Uh, the first one that came out. No, I'm sorry, the current one. The current one, no. Um, the producers on this project are called Don't Notaria. Um, they are a producer duo based in Atlanta. And I also have a track that was produced by Yalir, um, another Atlanta-based producer. And he produced pretty much the majority of my second EP, which was Journey. Okay. So uh, Never Enough Time, what number EP is this one? This one would be, as I'm thinking about it, it would be number three. Number three. Okay. The first one is on SoundCloud. They have to go dig to find that one. But the, <laughs> the other two are on all streaming platforms. Okay. Um, so did you do any writing on this uh, on this EP or? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, pretty much have done, did the writing on all three EPs. Uh, I think it's just really important to know what it is that you want to say before you sort of bring writers into the room. And I have done some, some writer sessions, but I think it, for me, especially during this time, during the pandemic, it's just, it was better for me to sit in my thoughts and be able to take them from paper and just put them in the songs. Uh, and I think it just felt more authentic that way. So I had a lot of fun writing for this project. Okay. Well, I can definitely um, hear the, uh, the talent you are a, a great singer um Thank and you. i just hope people go out and listen to uh to your music now you mentioned earlier some of your influences um when i hear your music i, I don't know i hear a little nita baker in you mm -hmm. um some others but you definitely have a distinctive uh distinctive voice um what's your writing process when you when you write about a song yes so for me it really depends on uh the producers that I'm working with uh with Dope Notaria we start from scratch so for the most part either I will bring a song to them or they will we will just sit in the studio together and pick drums snare we'll pick bass basically everything from the bottom up and I actually really enjoy working that way writing wise because then every little element makes me think about something different uh for example with risk it all they actually had that beat like a sort of like a sample of that beat um built out and so I just heard a little bit of it and I said okay I think I could take this somewhere else uh and I knew that I wanted to have like a, a afro beat kind of feel to it so in writing for risk it all like like my process was really just this time it was really just allowing the words to just flow with what I felt I think with my my second EP journey I was really focusing on like you know trying to share my experience and the narrative but this project was really just about really the vibes I think and really just like allowing the words to just kind of fill the space. And if they were a little bit less words than I had expected, that was fine too. Um, but I, I really enjoy just sort of closing my eyes and just listening to um, the way that the, the beats and the instruments sound. And I listen in the car, I listen when I'm cooking, I listen when I'm in the shower, because it's good to just be in all different places that somebody else could possibly be when they're listening to the music. Wow, I never heard that, but it it, it makes sense. Um, oh yes. So you um, you the music was the first part. Then you kind of wrote around the music. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so for uh, Risk It All, the music was the first part, and then I wrote around it. Uh, for example, Light Blue. Uh, that was a song where we picked 
certain parts of the beat. I was actually inspired by, um, there's a song by uh, Solange called Losing You. And I just loved like this nostalgic feel and the project was called Never Enough Time. So if you listen to it, I feel like some of, a lot of the songs have a period kind of vibe to them. That one was like my Janet Jackson 80s-ish vibe. And so as we were picking the beats, I was just kind of like, okay, this is giving me like, it's urgency. Like you, it, it has to be now, whatever it is, it's, it's now, she's impatient. Um, and so, yeah, with writing for, you know, with, where, where we're starting from the bottom, I think that it really helps again to like, just have a clear open mind and not come to the session already in my, you know, with, I, I'm going to write about this. It never works for me that way. Okay. So were you trying to, um, did you have a concept that you wanted to, um, to take us on or a journey you wanted to take us on with this, uh, this EP? You know, I really didn't. It, I would say that the project started with uh, the first single that I released, which was called Mimosa, and I released that last year. And I just knew that the spirit of that song was that I wanted people to feel like they can be themselves, even when it's not Sunday brunch or it's not the weekend anymore. And so in approaching Never Enough Time, which majority of these songs were recorded during the pandemic, that's a whole nother mindset now. Because I was like, okay, we have joy, but then there's also some sadness there's some you know anxiety kind of there's some um unknown but then there's also some urgency so I really wanted to try to put all of these emotions that I was feeling during the pandemic into this project and then I just said whatever the per you know whoever whatever you connect with that's amazing to me you know but I didn't want to stick to one you know kind of theme or just so many COVID albums I'm sure are coming soon but I was just like I don't want to sort of put myself just in that mindset. I just want to think about what are the different emotions that I'm feeling and just kind of put it in the project and see what people connect with. Okay. Um, now I mentioned earlier that um, it was released on October 30th. Um, yes. What's been the, uh, the reception that is, is gotten? Oh, just, you see, I'm smiling. Just so much positive energy, I think. And I didn't know, you know, what exactly people were expecting because, because my last EP came out in 2018, you know, in music world, that's like forever ago. And so I, I didn't know what people were expecting from me or if they would even be interested. And this is, you know, this is transparent, humble me, indie artist talking, but when I put it out, it was, totally different like it was it was more than I expected because I think people really had the time to listen and really like digest the songs as opposed to you know there being so many albums being put in put out at the same time and they're just kind of like oh yeah I saw your thing but I'm gonna get around to it like people really listened to it that day and that weekend and that I was already hearing back just just great feedback really from from folks and I'm, I'm really grateful for it. Okay. And I'm assuming you picked up some new fans along the way as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the crazy thing about social media is they don't have to know you, you know, to be able to connect with you. So it was really cool to see, you know, people tagging me like in their Instagram story, listening to the songs or, you know, just people you would see commenting on, you know, different things, me saying like, well, what do you, what song did you like the most? And it would just be, you know, different people that I've never met before. Like, I really like White Blue or No Filter is it. And it, it was just, it's, it's, it has been like really great to just see people, you know, just interacting. Yeah, you get that instant feedback with the internet, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Which can also be a little bit tough sometimes because it's like when you don't get that mm -hmm. feedback, then you're like, oh, you know, am I doing well? But, <laughs> you know, you kind of have to just put yourself. I try to put myself on a level playing field. You know, I receive the good. I also receive the silence. But when I do hear that silence, I take that as, OK, how can we configure? Did they get it? Did they not really get it? How can I? you know, change it in the marketing to make sure that they're, they're kind of getting it. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, a, I think it's a great album. And we were talking before, I believe that you were telling, telling me that um, your dad plays the Congos. Yes. And, yes. Uh, when I listened to Risk It All, I think it's Risk It All. 
I can, mm-hmm. I can hear that in the background. So when you said that, it's like, ah, I heard it in the song too. Um, so at the time of um, recording, like I said, it's the week before Christmas, I um, mm-hmm. understand you're doing a uh, video tomorrow. Yes, I am shooting like music video tomorrow. This would be my goodness. We got a ride in. We have Mimosa by this would be my fifth music video. Wow, that's crazy. All right. Yeah. So with um, with COVID, I don't know how it is in Georgia, but here in California, everything is just on lockdown. How tough is it to um, do a video in these times? Yes. Well, you know, COVID has changed a lot. Unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, Georgia is actually pretty wide open. There's a lot of things that I think it's just different, like just making sure, again, that like everybody's sort of forced to wear a mask, which they absolutely should. Um, but I think that in the, the times of shooting a music video during the pandemic, it's just another layer, I think, of, I guess, um, accountability. Uh, And that's like, again, with making sure that like everybody on set has on a mask at all times. You know, of course, I if I'm doing makeup or while I'm shooting, I'll have my mask off. But I think it's also just really encouraging people to know their status like before they show up on set. Um, And then also just keeping it really tight. You know, like for Mimosa music video, we had at least probably 20 people on set. And for this one, like we're really scaling it down to like basically under 10. And so with that, it's just like trusting your your team and just making sure that even before we get to the set, like we all know, you know, what the game plan is, how we can sort of be in and out as well. And I think there's some people that, you know, unfortunately because of the pandemic, like, there's some people that I've worked with that I would have loved to be on set, but they just, you know, they don't feel comfortable yet. And that's totally fine. I've allowed my team and the creatives that I work with to absolutely use their discretion because it's their health. And it, it, it means a lot. It's, it means more than just my being on set for my video. So I look forward to, you know, working with them when, when they feel comfortable again, but I think it's just trying to figure out how to maneuver and be a little bit more flexible, but also just, knowing, you know, the risk that comes with it. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. (laughs) VGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, so that's going to be released. Uh, is that for the single? I think you said Light Blue? Yes, yes. Uh, so we're looking at probably maybe January, early February. It may be a Valentine's Day drop. You never know. Oh, nice. Um, now are you, you mentioned you were an indie artist. Um, are you active on social media? Are you into the, the Instagram live and Facebook and and doing that? Yes. And pre pandemic, I was not as I was always active, like in posting and stuff like that, but I wasn't really doing virtual shows. And so that has sort of added a whole nother level of skill set for me, I think, <laughs> and just having all of the things to be able to make it happen. Luckily, I already had my own um, PA system at home for just rehearsing, but it really came in handy when it was time to do virtual shows. Okay. Um, and we're going to get to all your social media connections as well. Quickly, I want to, I read your profile and I understand that you're also uh a philanthropist too. Um, you help raise funds for the, uh, I think the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Yes, yes. Um, sorry, say that one more time. Say, talk to us about that. Yes, so um, there is a woman that I know who I've sort of, 
I would say that she's like a big sister to me. Her name is Queen. She also, her name is Shakipia as well, but she goes by Queen. And um, she's a, a, a yoga, a yoga expert. And so she was hosting um, an event in which she was just getting like giving women active. Um, and we, there was a live like yoga se segment. And I also performed um, during this session. And they also did like a, a healthy smoothie kind of test demo. And so it was really just about having carving out some space and time for you to be able to just do something for you and for yourself. Um, and I was just really happy to be a part of that because I feel that artists also go through mental illness and it's just as much as an illness as anything else. Um, and we, we go to the doctor to check up on everything else besides our mind. And so, especially during the pandemic, it was just really important to me to be able to support um, people who are doing that work. Oh, fantastic. And I agree. Um mental illness is something that we don't want to talk about, particularly in, uh, in our community. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's real. And it's, it it's so real. Yeah. And we definitely need to uh, not uh, be overcome by the stigma that's attached to it. So congratulations on uh, just you being aware. Um, so 2021, it sounds like it's going to hopefully um, with a vaccine and hopefully COVID this, We'll get back to. Oh, I hope so. I, I don't I'm, know. I know. I'm very hopeful. I am. I'm. I'm really just trying to. I think mentally prepare for the possibilities. I think. Um, I am hopeful that we will get back to some sort of normalcy, but I know that with just it being a new year, it's not going to change everything that has already happened. So there's still going to be some healing that needs to take place, though there may be a vaccine. Um, and so I'm, I'm really just kind of going, kind of just going at my own pace and just planning as much as I can. But I think 2020 has taught us a lot about planning at the end of the day, the universe is going to have its way. So uh, speaking of 2020, um, before COVID uh, took over, did you have a big 2020 plan in terms of uh, maybe touring or release some new music? Yes. Yeah, so I, I didn't have a tour plan, but I did have a pretty good amount of gigs planned for this summer. Uh, I was really looking forward to doing a show with So Far Sounds. Uh, they have different, just very intimate concerts uh, kind of in various states. And I was planted, I had been booked to do one in Atlanta and I had been trying to book that as a, a, for a while. Again, as Indy, you're like, you're on it, you know, you're following up, trying to make it happen. So I was really looking forward to it. And that was one that kind of fell through. Um, but I, I think that I'm, I, I believe in alignment. And I think that whatever was supposed to be, it will be eventually if it's if it's in the alignment of the stars. So I'm, I'm just continuing to work. And I think that um, with the work that I've put out, it will other opportunities will come. And, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that and, and hopeful for that because people I mean, so many things I have been offered that I had been trying to you know, book or, or, or connect and collaborate with people before the pandemic. And then it happened. And then people were able to focus on, you know, okay, who is this girl? What is she doing? What's her music like? Okay, I kind of like her. Maybe I will bring her back. So I'm hopeful for that. Okay. Um, now you mentioned that you are an indie artist. Um, yes. Do you foresee yourself maybe later on signing with the label or you want to stay, uh, stay indie? Yes, I, that's a great question. Every time I hear it, I'm just like, whatever sort of, if it falls in my lap or, I mean, well, it will never just fall in my lap because the work has already been done. Um, but I think that if the opportunity came and it, it made sense, you know, contract wise and term wise, and if, if I felt comfortable enough in my career to allow um, this team to come in and, and elevate me, I welcome that. Absolutely. Um, because I think that sometimes we shy away from, you know, we hear the stories and they're real stories, but I also know that um, there are certain advantages that you can get from being with a label where being by yourself is just so much harder to knock down those doors. And though being an indie artist now, it, it has its advantages. Like I, I really enjoy 
being able to, you know, control my, my creative process. Um, but I think it would also be really beneficial to have other people that can see things that you don't necessarily see, you know, with your branding or, or your trajectory. So I'm definitely open to, to both. Okay. Uh, what, what you, what song you really liked from the project? I like Risk It All. Uh, okay. I thought that was really smooth. Like I said, I heard a little Anita Baker. Um, and then there was another one I just heard before I went on. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was, was it never? No filter? No filter. Yeah. Okay. I like that. But I do, I, I like risk it all a little bit better. Um, okay. Okay. Well, it's a, sing, it's a single for a reason, you know, but yes, that's <laughs> funny. You pointed out the congas. Cause I was like, yeah, that's actually my dad. Yeah. You know what? It Congress. reminded me of um, when I first heard it and I had to go back and listen to it again. And I said, okay. Then it said, I, I, I remember it kind of sound like something uh, like from the nineties, from the eighties. Okay. That's mm. kind of cool. I, I like it. Then you had the horn section in there. I was like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Yeah. Yes. I'm like, okay. Cause you don't hear many horns in R and B music anymore. Oh, I know. So I, I was know. like, that's a, that's a, that's a, a welcome, uh, addition to the music. It's like, okay, I can get into this. You know, yes. I used to play saxophone, so like, okay, I can hear this. Oh, voice. okay. So you yeah. have another appreciation for the horn section. I, yes. I like bands. You know, I like the band. I like the full band and the horn section and the percussions. And mm-hmm. so when I hear all that in a song, which you don't hear much anymore. Uh, I know. It's a welcome treat. Yes. So, yes. That's, all, again, with listening to, you know, all of these different elements and with go-go go-go you can hear everything you can hear the person singing at the back who's probably not even close to the mic but there <laughs> you can still hear them <laughs> hollering <laughs> all of that is important and yes i had i specifically knew i wanted horns because um the song gave me like very much so a brazilian kind of vibe um and so i was like okay this is giving me carnival which means that we need some other types of, of instruments that may be played, you know. So right. I'm and glad I can also <laughs> hear I can also hear the jazz influence. You said jazz was a I can hear the mm-hmm. jazz influence too. So you you pretty much covered it all. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, that's that was the goal. I was like, just give it something that you know you can kind of just vibe to. You don't, it's not too fast or too slow. It's just a, a nice kind of constant. This, that's the type of dancing I would do if I was. How, how does uh, how does your family like the uh, EP? Oh, they love it. My mom, like, she tells me that she she shouldn't be doing this, but she speeds on the highway to the Mimosa Skate Mix, which is like the last song on the project. Um, she's like, I just for, it's something in it that just makes you like you know keep going faster um but yeah and my dad loves risk it all of course because he plays on it and but he also just i think he he appreciated like the house kind of influence too um so somalia i understand that um you also studied abroad for a little bit correct yes i studied abroad in london i was there for about three and a half months uh and i was studying at the uh university of goldsmiths in london and Uh, I just really enjoyed being able to just connect with other artists, I think, abroad. And they have another level of appreciation for R&B music. You know, of course, they know like Soul to Soul and they 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 have a lot of of artists there, um, you know, Corinne Bailey Ray that are they have that that soul element to them. And so just being indie and going over there and letting them hear my own music, you know, I was able to do some performing while I was there, too. So there was just it was just great to be able to go and be somewhere else where I could just kind of be kind of who wherever you want to be because they don't know you. Um, and there's some of the some people that I still talk to, like that are musicians uh, that I met while I was there. So it was really cool. Okay. We've interviewed, um, a number of artists from, uh, from London and also over a year period, the Netherlands, um, et cetera. And they do have an appreciation for, uh, R and B soul music that, um, even the artists that we've interviewed from the States who go over to Europe say the same thing. They have an appreciation. You'll be surprised how knowledgeable they are about R&B yes. music. 
Um, so what was your experience? Well, how, first of all, did you, did you like Europe? You know, I did. I, well, let me say, I liked London. Okay. okay. I, I enjoyed, I did get to travel to some other parts of England. Um, I think I went to Bath um, and maybe some, another place in England, but I did enjoy London. Uh, while I was there, I did get to visit uh, Barcelona, Venice, and Paris. Um, yeah, I enjoyed London. <laughs> But Venice was actually one of my, like, my dream destinations. So I think all of it just sort of influenced just, just the idea of just, just opening your mind. Because that was my first time going out of the country. Um, and I, again, I went to Spelman, so I stayed in Atlanta. So I had never been really on my own. And this was the first time going out and just kind of just being independent, being fine with going by yourself. I'm sure my parents were scared out of their mind. But I was like, you know, I'm going. So we're just gonna have to deal with it. So, but yeah, I, I did I did enjoy Europe. I could actually see myself living in London like for a good amount of time. So do you think that um your trip over there or your time over there um influenced your music at all? Oh, absolutely. I was just uh telling you about you know, risk it all. I love artists like Nao. Uh, in Samba. And but even before I went over there, I was already in this like very, I guess it's kind of like a mix of like electronic and house and soul. And so I was really interested in hearing other artists that were kind of doing something similar, but even on the ground level of like students that were at the, the college. Uh, and so when I came back, like even my brother told me the other day when you're at my project, he's smiling. When you came back from London, you were on a whole nother level. And I think that's because of just that independency, like, you know, just going over there and just trying, you know, because I actually had made from my second EP journey. There's at least two songs that I made and I recorded while I was in London that are on that project. And that's that's why it was sort of journey, because it was like you were at Spelman, a freshman, and then you journeyed to, to London and came back and was still writing. So it was just really cool to be able to go and, and see how that like kind of affected my artistry. And it definitely did. Um, this is a good time. Why don't you um, plug your social media uh, connections as well? Yes. So you all can follow me on Instagram at The Somalia Show. Uh, my website is www.thesomaliashow.com. And there you can find out about performances that I'm doing. I also launched a merch line during the Christmas season. You know, I sold you my single. One of my singles is Mimosa. So I got my wine glasses so you can kind of toast it up. Um, and you can also follow me on uh, my Facebook page, which is Somalia R. Um, and yeah, those are, those are sort of my main platforms. And of, of course, YouTube is Somalia R and you can check out the new Risk It All music video. Okay. And that's where we can find your other previous videos as well. Yes. Yes. You gotta, you gotta go down the, the rabbit hole, but you're going to, you're going to enjoy it though. You're going to like it. <laughs> okay. Um, and we'll post all of Somalia's, uh, social media connections, as well as links to her new music on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. So, Molly, anything else you want to cover since, um, I guess, uh, time now? It's uh, getting kind of late where you are. I'm in California. You're in Georgia. Um, yes. Anything else you want to cover that we didn't cover? Well, I've, been, I've definitely been enjoying it. So, I mean, the time is, it's here. <laughs> it's going to keep going. Um, but I think what I would like to say is just that, like, give yourself grace, you know, at wherever, whatever point that you are at, like, I think in your journey, if you're an artist, you know, if you're just a, a working person, like, just give yourself grace and, and time to be able to heal from everything that we have been experiencing. I've done that through writing and creating my project and also doing uh, to put a performance series um, called Peaceful Performances for the Pandemic, where I dedicated the first one to frontline workers. And the second show was dedicated to frontline activists because I've seen hand in hand how all of these different things have fed into our world and, and, and it's important and you feel all of these things and you see all of these things. So I just want to tell people to just give yourself grace, give yourself time to, to really um, kind of process what's been happening and just try to go into 2021 with the open heart and, and mind and just ready to, to take it on and all that it entails. 
Okay, fantastic. Very uh, nicely put. One quick question, I'll promise to let you go. What do you hope uh, people get out of your music? I hope that they get positivity. I hope that they get, um, I hope that they feel joy. I hope that they find something that they can connect with, whether it's something really small, like, you know, from some of my lines, like in my songs, it always gets people like with Mimosa, just the first line of baby mama's on the flow right now, auntie's on the flow. It, I don't know what it, it may be, but it's just those little tidbits um, that kind of show my personality. And I hope that they just, they just get the feeling of, you know, this is a real person, you know, not behind, you know, hiding behind an Instagram or a Facebook page. Like this is a real, this is a black woman who's out here just writing about how she feels and, um, you know, her experiences. So I, I hope that they get a little tidbit of all those, those different things and that they really, I want them to like it. I want them to, to enjoy it. Like I want them to listen to it again. So I would say those are some of the things I want them to kind of get from the music. Okay. And uh, hopefully also inspires people as well to, uh, this has been a real pleasure. I appreciate you uh, taking the time today. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Like, again, on this journey, I remember everybody who interviews me, who writes about me, who tags me. So I appreciate you for deciding to make me a part of, of your journey and your platform. Not a problem. And keep us posted on whatever you got going on. We'll be more than happy to, if we don't interview you again, we'll be happy to post it on our website and let make people aware of what's going on with Somalia. Oh, thank you. And hopefully, you know, when the world gets back to a little bit of normal, maybe I might be on the West Coast and can connect with y'all. Love to see you. And I'm sure uh, by that time, you have plenty of fans out here as well. You know, again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you know, you keep putting out good music like you are. People will find it. Doesn't matter where they are. Yes, I, I believe that. And I receive it, too. Thank you. Right. That's Somalia, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Somalia. You can find out more about Somalia on her website at thesomaliashow.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. One more thing, don't forget to check out our new merchandise site at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. We call that the Soul Shop. It's available now. Check out all our merchandise, 10% off all t-shirts and hoodies. That's our show for today. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. <laughs>